First thing you're going to do is prepare the test containers. So Dave is going to glue the square to the bottom of the container. Is it too late to say anything? There's some glue on the bottom of the square. And then while it's still hot, just right into the bottom of the container. So you gotta hold it there for a few seconds until the glue starts to set up. Make sure it stands up. After a few seconds, maybe 10, 15 seconds, it should stand on its own. And it, yeah, so see how it's starting to stand on its own? So a few more seconds, it's not completely set yet. So, because you want it to be as perpendicular as possible. The bees will interact with that strip. So the glue is still hot. Okay, that's what it should look like. So after about 30 seconds, the glue will start to cool off enough that it should hold it up. To make your test containers, we'll have to make the weighing container. So Dave will label this one with a number one on it, on the edge. So on that flat edge, that's where we want to label it. And then smear some petroleum jelly. So if you use a little tissue, scoop some out. And then just apply a thin layer. You don't need too much, but a good coating is good. And you want to get it all over the sides and bottom. You want to have enough on there so that way when Varroa fall on it, it's good. Okay. Okay. So that's what it should look like. Some, some petroleum jelly with a number on the dish. Make up as many dishes as you make up containers per your yard. All right, we're out in the colony, and this is how we're gonna collect our sample. So Dave has two frames of brood. You see he has sealed brood on here, covered with bees. And then he's gonna shake it into the bucket. After they go in the bucket, we're gonna use this small four ounce sampling cup to, uh, to sample the bees. And then they're gonna go into that test container with that square vape of our, with the screen lid, you can see that here. So Dave's gonna shake them into the bucket. So it's a quick, sharp shake like that. And these are going to be young, young bees, so they're not going to fly away too much. So he's going to then take the scoop. Okay. And that's going to go into the container. And then with the container, put the screen lid on. It's, be it's easy to do this with two people. So you should be able to go pretty quickly from the bucket to the sample cup to, this, to the cup with screen lids. Um, so that's the first step. Now that we have our sample, we have to write on the bottom here. So we're gonna, just going to have a Sharpie. We're going to put number one for colony number. So you can see that there. And then 245. That is the time colony and time on the sample so now that we have the sample we got to prep it for the test so Dave is gonna put four binder clips around the lid so you can see here they're gonna go equally spaced apart in corners like this to create A method to hold it up off the tray okay and now that test container gets inverted and put onto the tray like this match up the corners of the tray with the clips like this it holds it in securely make sure the colony number on the top matches the number on the lip once you have your setup keep it in a stable condition out of the direct sun. It could be underneath a tree, in the cab of your truck, 
somewhere where it's not excessively warm, but somewhere where you're not going to be in the direct sun. We found out that temperature really doesn't affect this test very much. So just keep them in a stable place. That's why this uh, food cafeteria tray is a great place to put them on. Again, underneath the tree, um, in the shade of your truck, in the cab, somewhere where they're out of the wind and they're going to be stable. This isn't the most stable system, but it works for this case. So we're now going to let these sit here for three hours. So 2.45 is when we started. We come back three hours later, so 5.45. So it's been three hours, and now we're going to finish the test. So to finish the test, you'll take the cup, hold it upside down. That way no more Varroa will drop out of it. The screen will be facing up once you're done. You'll inspect the tray for Varroa. We're going to pretend these little red dots here are Varroa. Okay, so you can see a number of them. We then need to collect the ones off of the Varroa on the tray into this tube. It has a label on it that says susceptible tray. And it has a white lid on the top, white dot on the top. You can see that there. This is what we're going to use to collect the susceptible Varroa from the tray. The tube will have some solution in it to preserve the DNA. What you do is open the top and then using forceps like this, pick the individual Varroa off into the tube. Or you could use a fine haired brush like this, get them out of the Vaseline and into the white top tube as such. Once you collected all the row off the tray, record the number on the data sheet. That will go under the column that says Varroa from the drop. We're gonna wash, now we're gonna wash the bees. So the first thing you're gonna do is when you take out the binder clips is to use the paper towel to remove any extra petroleum jelly. Just makes it easier later. Then remove the clips and hold them to the side. Then add a couple drops of dish soap directly to the bees through the screen. Good. Then fill the container about halfway with water. Okay. A little bit more. And then agitate the cup to make sure all the bees get sucked down into the soapy water. Okay. And notice the bees will go down into the suds. Okay. Once the bees are submerged, tap it down. You can remove the lid. I'm going to remove the screen lid. And then add the regular lid and then we'll shake. Now that the bees are submerged we're going to wash them so the day will shake for 25-30 seconds. Shake it vigorously like that. There's no wrong way here. So Dave's going horizontal that's probably good. You can go vertical, no wrong way, but we need about uh, 10 more seconds here of shaking. Five. Okay, so that's 30 seconds. We will now let the container sit for a minute to let the mites dislodge. We will repeat the shake for 30 seconds, rest for one minute. We'll do that for a total of three shakes. Now you've gone through your shakes, we're going to replace the regular lid with the original screened lid. You might get some foam that comes out. That's okay. Put that to the side. Replace it with the screen lid. Make sure it's secure. Then we're going to gently pour it into this empty, this extra container. You'll get some suds, that's okay. And then now we let that settle so the Varroa could settle to the bottom. Another rinse. So Dave's going to pour it quickly from that screen into the new container. Fast, fast, fast. OK. 
Okay, you can get a good shape like that. Good. And then again, we'll just wait for them to float to the bottom here. Well, sink to the bottom. Most of the time, the Vro will sink to the bottom. You can see here, we have some Vro at the bottom. But every now and then, they'll stay at the top. You can see we have some hanging out near the top in the foam, and they're not going down. However, we could still collect these Varroa. So what you do is you just take this little sieve, this little strainer. Um, we'll include one of these, or else you get one at the dollar store. And then just pour it, all that contents right through. Okay. And there you go. There's, there are the, there are the row from the wash. Okay. Good. Repeat the washes from the sample cup into the wash cup. Keep doing that until you find no more Varroa. It may take two or three extra times, but then you want to collect them into this sieve, and you can see them right there. These are now the resistant Varroa. Those resistant Varroa are going to be collected into the tube that says resistant wash, and it has the red top on it. When you're collecting them from this sieve with a um, forceps or a fine tooth, uh, fine hair brush, you'll also write on here which colony they came from. So Dave, you wanna write colony uh, number one on this one, and bring over the brush to show them how you harvest the mites. So Dave is gonna harvest these mites so when he's collecting the resistant ones into the red tube, he's going to write number one on the lid. Okay. And then using that brush, he'll collect them off of the little uh, tray here. So they go in, and you could just dip the tip of the brush into the solution. And they should come right off. If not, you could wipe them against the side of the tube. See them going in there. Okay, so this is how you're going to harvest the resistant mites from this sieve. Use a brush or a um, or some forceps. All right, once you've got all your varroa sampled, you can see the tubes in this bag. Put them right back in this bag. And when you seal it, don't deflate it totally. There should be a little bit of a padding to it. You see how it's a little inflated? We're then going to put it into the shipping envelope here to ship back to us. When it's printed out normally, this will be a label that's a prepaid UPS overnight label that will be shipped right to us. So then what you're going to do is pack it, the container, you're going to put the paper in. This is just some junk paper, you can use newspaper. Put one at each end. A little bit of packaging. And then the tubes are going to go in between those uh, crumbled up paper. And then fold it over and you lick it to seal it. Okay. As such. And then you're going to seal it up with some tape. You could use packing tape, duct tape, whatever, but this would just secure it. Okay. You get the gist. Once it's adequately sealed, then you will just take the package and it'll have a UPS label on it. You take it to the UPS store, drop it off, it'll be shipped overnight to us. And with that, your sampling is done.